back to another episode of Beating Alpha. This is episode 108, and we have a very special guest on. Again, it's not the first time we spoke, we're talking with him, so we had a pre pleasant conversation the first time, but I'm very happy to introduce you to Adam Levine. Again, maybe you heard that uh, name and surname before, but this man is all about real estate and real estate investing. So uh, a little bit about his, uh, started his career influenced by his father, who has been investing in real estate for over 20 years. Adam holds a Master of Science in Property Management from Drexler University. In, two, in uh, 2012, Adam created Levine Capital Management LLC with the goal of managing his family capital, investing with high quality, experienced sponsors to generate superior risk, adjusted returns, helping to preserve and grow his family capital. In addition, Adam is one of the founding partners of RCAP Capital LLC, intended for his family to participate in loans with institutional and high net worth investors. Arcade Capital has become one of the premier fastest growing hard money lending companies in New Jersey. Adams recently, uh, recently launched a co-investment platform with TCS Anika Homes, allowing investors to invest alongside Levine Capital at a much lower investment size than a direct investment with TSX, TSS Anika Homes. Investors will benefit from their private mastermind group with an opportunity to learn while they monitor their co-investments. And of course, for more information, you can find him on uh, LinkedIn. That's going to be Adam Levine. Uh, of course, that link is going to be down below and on YouTube at Levin, uh, Levine Capital Management. So uh, quite a big introduction, but I'm very happy to have you today on the show, Adam. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, thanks for reaching out to me on um, LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. <laughs> That's no problem. Happy to connect. Listen, uh, so where did we start? Quite a bio here, you know, so <laughs> let's start somewhere. First of all, uh, 20 years of experience in real estate investing, so kind of influenced by your father. So maybe we, we talk about that. I mean, how did you get involved with the real estate business? My father, he, he um, was a dentist, ran a very successful, uh, pri he was in private practice. He had his own dental, you know, pra uh, practice. And he did very well for himself. He, he was always interested in investing. And at an early age, I got involved because I was his only son and I would watch him and I was like his shadow, like watching him. He was always at his desk doing paperwork. He was always making some type of deal. And he used to always tell me, Adam, you know, stay out of the stock market, just focus on real estate, even though he was still, you know, he had stockbrokers and, and he, you know, he would gamble. That was gambling to him. Um, but what's really interesting is, is that he was right because he was able to, like, he was able to retire at an early age. It was actually age 50 he retired. He could have retired sooner than that but it was really um different things that happened in the in in the, during the millennium like year 2000 that he was like you know what? i don't need this no more let me i i done well for myself i have cash flow and let me just let me take it easy and, and not take it easy he's still gonna work but he's he sold his practice and and he's gonna enjoy life and still you know and 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 manage what he has so i was still so I was learning a lot from him. Um, what's interesting was, is that, um, you know, he, over 20 years of investing, he's seen multiple cycles. He wasn't 20 years, like on and off. Some people are like, oh, I'm 20 years. And meanwhile, they maybe done one or a few deals and they're, but he's very consistent. Like he was always in the game. Um, he was able to survive like, you know, multiple uh, cycles, like, you know, the, 2001, you know, there was a, a scare. Uh, there was um, the, 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 the tech bubble back in the late 90s, the, 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 the SNL crisis, and then 2008, that was a, you know, and, but he was always, he was okay. Like he, like his life didn't change. <laughs> you know, his lifestyle didn't change because of his real estate holdings. He had cash flow, rentals. People always needed the rent. Um, so, and what's interesting is later on, um, it was around 2000, I think 2012. I don't hold me to the date. He, 
he discovered passive investments. I mean, he was he was investing passively before that. Um, he probably didn't even realize it, like the term, like now, like people use it passive or active a lot. Uh, he was involved actually in syndications with his own friends. Um, or, you know, it was a few partners, friends, they would invest and buy apartment buildings. And so he was involved with that. And he still is in those deals and gets quarterly checks, price checks. Um, and I, I actually just conducted an interview on him recently as, um, at his uh, country club, we we did it about a week ago about and about how a little bit about himself and how he was able to build his wealth in real estate. But what really inspired me was is that he was investing actively. Then he got into passive investments around 2012, and he started investing with others. Um, and he got involved with private lending. He basically he tried going off on his own. And he, you know, when you're when you're very successful, a lot of people are you you attract a lot of people that want what you have, which is capital. They know that you have it. They're actually people are trained to look for high income earners such as dentists. It's just there's just the nature of it. And so he got he invested with people that he thought he trusted and he got burnt. <laughs> it just happens. You know, he's very smart, but he, you know, he, it's just, he, you, you trust people, you think they're going to do well by you. And so basically he, he started relying on me to like, he came to me like, Adam, you know, help me out here because he got involved with private lending. He got involved with lending to other hard money lenders um, and I said, look, I could help you originate loans. I could help you vet passive opportunities. So that's, so I did that. So I created Libby Capital to help manage his money, basically to originate loans where we're the lender and we're originating loans. I found a few operators, flippers that we constantly will do the same deals with. They had a lot of volume with these few lenders, um, I later discovered uh, that I could create our, my own harmony lending company. So I partnered up with a flipper. We created Arcad Capital because I didn't have the experience in flipping houses. I understood the the lending, like you know, I understood the the, the underwriting, but uh, construction wasn't my thing. Um, so I figured, you know what? Let me partner with them, and it, it was really an idea that it took off. I mean, we're we're past seventy million dollars and. Uh, in three years, maybe a little bit less. Um, it was a way for us to diversify. It was a way for us to be able to lend and for us to be able to have liquidity and not even have to put out all our money. We could actually co-lend with other institutional partners or we could fund the loan and sell the loan off. Um, now we have a track record where we don't even have to put up any money. Um, but it's really, it's a, it's a really great business. And then, Recently, about uh, last year, um, one of the sponsors that we invest with, this is for the private equity side. We've been investing for with the sponsor for the past 10 years. I basically said, hey, let me make a deal with you. Let me launch a fund to invest in your fund. To, it's a fund of funds. It's actually, it's a feeder fund where since we have a lot of money already invested with you, could I have a better deal than investing directly? Not only that, can I reduce the minimum investment and, you know, offer a higher return? So I made that deal with them. Um, and it's it's actually, it's a very nice deal they gave me. But it's also, it took a large amount of capital to invest with them and also the relationship too. Mm -hmm. um, so that I, I opened up last year. And then what's interesting was... Um, I can't disclose that sponsor because it's a it's a confidential arrangement that they don't want me talking telling everybody what our deal is. Um, I mean, obviously, I could tell you, but you have to sign a confidentiality agreement. Um, later on, I I, I opened up the co investment platform with TCS Attica Homes. Um, one of the managing partners, Daniel Edry, 
Um, I've known him for about five years or so. Um, he comes from a background as a mezzanine bridge lender back in the 90s. Uh, he started his family-owned company. He, you know, he did very well for himself. And I reached out to him because he invested with some sponsors that we invest with, our family invest with. So we had some synergies and he, um, later on, he created Annika Equities where that's where he would invest as an LP. And then he created, then he partnered with the Adler family and Gaurav Gambier um, to, there's, there's three of them that the create TC's Annika Homes where they want to be the, the black stone of workforce housing. And really what the happy was we, I made a deal said, Hey, can I invest with you as an LP through a joint venture? And I want to, I want to kind of be like in your shoes, like how you used to invest as an LP. Um, can you teach, can you teach me how to do that? And can you, can, and can I also help educate our investors as well? And can you help me with that? So we did, <laughs> you know, uh, which is really, it was really nice of them, actually. And we closed two funds. Um, and it, it's really, it's a really interesting model, the, the SFR space. They're focusing on 20 units or less. Mm -hmm. um, and really, it's becoming more of an institutionalized asset class because you have the Blackstones. I mean, they were the first to get into it, um, to take it to an institutional scale. You know, you know, now you have many other institutional players entering the market, like billions of dollars coming into the market. And now they're at that, now they're at that point where they're dealing with, you know, institutional investors now. I mean, granted, I was a small institutional investor, but now they're dealing with larger players in, in the field. And one of their institutional partners wants to take them nationwide. Um, so... Right, so we have the education platform still, and we're probably going to be launching the next fund probably within, I would say, 12 months. It, it could be less, like, you know, but I'm going to be pessimistic and say the next 12 months because, look, you know, they already have one large investor who wants to do a lot in Philadelphia, and then I may take another city with them, you know, maybe Detroit or another city. Um you know, and I'll, and I'll open that up, you know, the middle investment to get in that, to get in with that would be, you know, before it was 200,000 because they were starting small, you know, now they're going to be $5 million, you know, but investing with me, I'll, my middle investment used to be 25,000 with them, with me to invest with them. Now I'm bumping up to 50,000, but I may raise it later on, you know, um, mm -hmm. because what's, what's happening now is, um, so what we're doing is, Really, you're investing with me. I'm making a deal with the sponsor because we already have a lot of money invested with them. We're not dealing, we're not like a crowdfunding shop where we're doing this with any sponsor that comes to us. We're, I'm not even really like sponsors reach out to me all the time, but I'm not, you know, I, 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 I like to find my, the sponsor to deal with. Does that make sense? Um, and now we're actively looking for another sponsor because one, the, the, the aggregation fund is more of an opportunistic strategy and that's a very strong sponsor. Um, I, I have their financials, I studied them. I know their track record. They're very strong financially. They're very strong with a track record, um, but they're more, they're more opportunistic in multifamily and actually it's, it's actually a really good time to get into, but not every investor wants opportunistic. The other sponsor with uh, TCS, they're, um, they're more value add. Granted, they will have more stabilized um, funds because what's going to end up happening is that probably be five years from now because we closed on two funds and eventually they're going to buy us out of those funds. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. They're going to, once everything is stabilized, they're going to buy us out. They want to buy it. They, they want to, they don't want to sell it. They may sell some, but the real goal is to own tens of thousands of these and then eventually open up a REIT. So, so maybe can, can later on, how, I may... How big is the portfolio that the TCS and Eco Homes currently have? Um, uh, how big are they? So approximately? The, the, yeah, so right now they're small. The, the, the first fund they did, I think, was... It was all their own 
equity. It was all equity, no debt. It was more of a trial fund um, with just them, the principals. I think that was, um, might have been 12 properties they bought. There were, there were just 12. Just got They wanted to just make sure all the underwriting assumptions were accurate. They wanted to check the boxes. The second fund was um, that I invested with that was 15 properties. We took on debt. Um, the third fund we was more of um, hurry, 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 you know, COVID, and we want to mm-hmm. buy cheap, um, and that was bottled out to be about fifty-seven to sixty properties. And we're talking all single um, family. That was right? cor- correct. It, it, single family, but it could, it could be twenty years or less, mm-hmm. uh, because the lender will allow twenty years. They have a lot of credit. Um, and the lender will only accept one, you know, 20 units or less. Um, so can and I the line of credit they have is, it, yeah, sorry, get, sorry for interrupting. So can I ask you a question again, for somebody who is watching and there maybe came across, you know, a few people that kind of, you know, push them the, the traditional kind of multifamily syndication deal. So what will be kind of pros and cons uh, when you invest with a fund like, you know, TCS into single family homes and like a traditional multifamily, what will be the differences? So that's an excellent question. So typically with multifamily, when you're dealing with larger types of assets, you're dealing with, for example, um, so TCS, right? The, the I'm invested with the son. The son's father is one of the largest multifamily landlords in the nation. Um, you can look about gold dollar real estate investments. They're, they own like 40 or 50,000 units. When they're going to compete, when, 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 when they're going to compete with gold dollar, gold dollar will buy at a very low cap rate at like 5% or typically that's who you're dealing with. When we're dealing with the SFR space, um, where in the market they're in, they're more in affordable markets, but not, they're not in um, the high end stuff, you know, more, Workforce housing, affordable. Their, their, their target is, I mean, they always want to buy. Right now, let's say it's a value-add space. They want to buy with at least a 20 to 25% profit margin, but they want to go in at like an 8% or more cap rate going in. Um, the reason why they can get that is because they're not competing. Where right now, they're not competing with a lot of the investors who are competing for these large multifamily assets that are really driving down the cap rates um they're that's what they're getting for they're chasing more yield um but granted not anybody could pull this off this is not like a simple thing i mean they're vertically integrated i mean they're the for example in philadelphia they have tcs management services that's one of the largest property management companies in that area they manage over uh, like i don't know like four thousand units they're growing um, they have uh, the construction company, um, so they could pull it off. I mean, Daniel Edgy, who partnered with them, you know, he would never even thought about considering this space that it's a massive, it's a lot of brain damage, but when there's massive work, a lot of work, that's where, that's how you make, that's how you make money in this business. It's, it's, there's gotta be work and they're doing a lot of work. They had the infrastructure in place, but you know, so they could buy at a higher cap rate going in. There's more yield going in, and they're able to repatriate their monies faster. I mean, they could do it within. We modeled within like 12 months. You know, um, to be able to do it. Um, plus or minus, obviously, you know, COVID threw us off a little bit, but um, you know, multifamily, you're not going to get that. Um, that's the difference. Um, but when you're owning many, many units. You're dealing with economies of scale, so you're bringing down your operating operating expenses. If you look at some of the the REITs, the single family REITs, they they held up better than the other real estate REITs. Um, and there's a reason why you have a lot of um, institutional capital coming into this space is because, it, if anything, it's um it's more attractive. I mean, as a as a renter, I mean, you're living in a single family home versus a uh, a uh, uh, a garden style apartment, um, you have more space. <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and, um, you know, tenants, they live in the, the, the average, uh, they live in typically longer than, than apartments. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there's more liquidity in the market because now you have more lenders. I mean, you could look at, um, agency debt. I mean, you go to 
you know, or you go to like Corvest or there's many lenders that that they want to lend on the SFR space. So to 20 units or less. So it's very, very popular. The lenders are bullish on it. Investors are coming in. I mean, every I, I'm always looking up. I see more money coming into this space. Um, and and that and the reason why it wasn't is it, really this asset class is really geared towards the mom and pop investors. But now with technology, it's becoming institutionalized because they figured out a way to really manage it. I think it's getting better. Before, before it was very difficult, but now look at it. You have eye buyers coming. You have open doors. You have the express offers with um, EXP, Tello offers. You have all these different eye buyers that are coming in. Zillow, you know, they're coming in because now you have technology. You could look online and you could see where the property. You could you have so much technology at your fingertips where it's making it possible. And then when you own tens of, eventually, you know, what TCS they want to own tens of thousands of these. I mean, they're dealing with an institutional investor that wants to take them nationwide. Um, they could do it. And then now like that, the reason why they could go nationwide is because they could pick you back off of um, uh, the relationships they have with with um, gold dollar because they have the the relationships in other states to be able to pull it off. It's not something you just wake up one night and say, I'm going to just do this. It's not, you know, but they could do it. Um, I'm investing with them because they have the capability. Um, that's so, the reason so why. Can we talk about, again, probably get that question quite often. It's, it's a very simple question. Like what states are, are the TCS currently investing in and for, for what type of reasons they pick in those particular states? They're in Philadelphia right now. Um, Just Philadelphia. So reason, all, th all three. Well, right now, they're, yeah, right now they're in Philly. Um, they're looking in, uh, you know, they're looking, they're looking in Camden, New Jersey, uh, in certain areas, Camden's hot. I mean, the, there's an, there's SFR buyers there. R right now, they're in Philly, and then they'll start looking at Detroit and other areas. Um, why, they Detroit? May, why Detroit? Because there's a lot of people talking about Detroit kind of, you know, like the, the reputation is there, so. There's, there's, there's opportunity. I mean, look, you know, they're not going into the best neighborhoods right now. Um but they're going to better areas, but they're not, but they're, but when, when an area like that could be revitalized, it, there's, there's, there's opportunity. I mean, it, Detroit's been going, you know, it's gotten better than years ago, but there's yeah. no opportunity. Uh, the, the areas that they are in Philadelphia, it's, it's gentrifying. I mean, it, there's a lot of money being pumped in. Um, there's room for Im improvement. You know, so it's definitely, um, it's, uh, it, you know, it, there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, but granted, they're looking at other states because there's, um, you know, there's, uh, basically, uh, this opportunity in other states, they, they could actually, they have the, the, the relationships to be able to go to other states. Got it, got it. So can we talk about Levine Capital, of course, because you uh, kind of working with these institutional caliber type of, you know, real estate funds and like, how, how can we talk about how do you actually structure the deals and how do you allow people, because you mentioned a little bit, but how do you allow people and what does it take? I mean, at this current moment, and can you talk about what, what's going to happen with the fund in the future? Like what type of people can invest with you and what, what does it take for them to do so? Yeah, so... I started out originally with my one feeder fund where they could invest as little as 10,000. Um, I raised it to 50,000 because to be honest with you, um, it, 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 it's a lot of work for someone. With, I want to help people, but you know, it's just, I'm, I'm offering a lot and and I realized I, I, I just want to raise the minimum higher because I didn't, there's a lot of cost in, in the taking in someone smaller. So that's why I decided to raise it, um, to be honest with you. Maybe when I grow, because right now we're a small shop. When I grow, maybe I'll reduce the minimums again, but I would have to have an IR team to work with, with the investors. Right now you're dealing with me. I had my partner uh, take him. Um, he's in career right now, actually. He's um he worked for Goldman Sachs for over five years. Um, he has a master's in finance. He's a 
CFA, he's a CPA. He started working with me because he, he eventually, he got in with me because he wanted to learn, um, you know, more active, to be active investing. And, and he invested with me in some of the deals that we did with TCS. I said, Hey, why don't you partner with me? Because, um, you have a skill set that, that I, that is tremendous. I mean, your background, your, your knowledge and, and basically he's helping me, um, analyze and put and, and structure the deals. Um, you know, the, the, I already structured the deal with TCS. I mean, not TCS, um, aggregation, but that's already been put in place. Um, but with TCS, he helped me work. He helped me put together those, uh, or the third fund at least. Well, fund two, he invested in, but then he helped me with fund three and he's going to help me going forward now as a partner and also as an investor. Um, but really what we're doing is, uh, we're aggregation fund. My family invested a lot of monies with this one sponsor and they're, they'll offer me a higher preferred return. Um, that's really what they're doing versus investing directly with them. Um, typically a high net worth investor or a credit investor is not going to write, you know, a seven, maybe they're not writing seven figure checks. Maybe they're writing a $50,000 check, writing a 50 or a hundred thousand or a few hundred grand is not going to really get you a lot. You're not going to have a lot of control provisions, nothing like that. I'm not saying control, but you're not going to be able to like, it depends. Look, we could always structure deals. We could structure deals however we want. We could structure joint ventures and just as a, not a fun, but just as a, just a deal by deal. But, um, but with, we, we're coming in as an institutional investor. So we're, we already committed a larger denomination. That's why we could, we could get a higher preferred return or maybe more of a profit split. If that makes sense. Um, and that's what we're doing. You know, um, TCS, uh, we came in as uh, we're smaller LP investors, uh, but I but I had the education with it, so the investors weren't really getting more of a return, but they wouldn't be able to invest directly with them because the middle investor was two hundred thousand, with me it was twenty five thousand, but then I had the education, all the value, of, along with it, um, and later on that they're. they're raising the minimum to um, $5 million because they're growing. I mean, they have, now they have a proven model and now they have institutional investors. Well, one in particular that they're building on a model for. Um, I would like to continue with them, but it, have it's, to raise uh, your, like I said, have I, to raise I, yeah, I, plus none of that. Like they, they're, they, they're working on in Philadelphia with this one investor Um they're overseas investor and, and then they'll have to open it up for me in another city, which is fine. You know, so that may be, like I said, 12 months. And then we're looking at, we're looking at more sponsors right now to, we are thinking about multifamily value add um, or debt. Um, so that's something else we're looking at, or we may just eventually become, um, you know, become really good with, we're really good at structuring deals. I brought my partner on, because he's very good at analyzing. I mean, he analyzes corporate debt and real estate debt is, it's, it's numbers. It's, you know, so if anything, you know, we could, my goal is to not only cater towards the high net worth investors or credit investors, but I want to start working with wealth advisors because what what's happening is, is uh, we're noticing that, you know, I'm talking to wealth advisors that, you know, domestically or overseas, um, that they understand, you know, they, they manage money. I mean, but they don't, maybe they, they don't need me to make a deal. I mean, they could write a $10 million check or more and they can make their own deal. What they're lacking is the expertise. You know, they're not a specialist in real estate. And, and so they'll, they'll, they'll rely on us. And we'll help leverage our relationships. We'll help leverage our skill sets and 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 help put something together. We could customize anything for them. Uh, but our special, but our specialty is real estate. We could either go equity or or debt. You know, credit. We could if, if we could. You know, that's something else that we're 
we could do later on because I had the lending company and, you know, we could fund, you know, we could fund um, other originators eventually and we could leverage, you know, and then, and have a whole second. And I don't want to, I don't want to keep it simple, but we could basically uh, come in and, 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 and leverage our expertise and, and funding originators and, and um, bundling up the loans and sell, you know, securitizing the loans. And um, there's, a, there's a whole other platform that I'm working on in the future as well. But, uh, okay. but that's why I, but Tades, uh offers a tremendous amount of value in that uh, with me. Got it. So can you talk about you when you mentioned financing? Because uh, one of other businesses kind of which is like integrated to is Arca Capital, Arca Capital, if, I, if I'm saying that right. And can, yeah, can, that's you, right. can you talk about that? Because uh, we talked about it and you kind of uh, provided these, uh, you know, loan programs for fix and flip, uh, you know, um, deals. So is that what you're currently working on also? Or, or like, what, what is that business? Uh, you know, yeah, it's... Like, um. It's yeah, it's transitional lending, which is very, very uh, the fix and flip, the you know the one to four family fix and flip, or ground up construction, or bridge loans, multi family bridge loans. It's very popular. There's a lot of um, a lot of investors that are looking to. I mean, they're actively investing or flipping houses, or they or they want rentals. We also offer the non QM rental loans, like one to four family rental loans. Um, and it's very popular right now. Um, if anything, it's it's probably it's going to become more popular because it's very popular. But there's a lot of there's a lot of um, inventory that's going to be coming to the market um, that we see. Um, this pandemic probably is helping. Will help. Uh, will help um, uh, speed the process up of of, you know, whenever there's, look what happened last recession. I mean, the Blackstone came in and they bought up that, you know, they, they bought up thousands of homes. Same thing with like investors, like you or I, you know, there's, there's going to be opportunity. There's already opportunity before, but there's going to be even more opportunity. And what we're doing is we're providing the financing for them. And there's a lot of institutional capital coming to the market that is, um, you know, Originally, my family, we start out investing with other lenders. Then we started private lending ourselves. And then I partnered up with some flippers in, um, in New Jersey we, to create ARCA Capital. And what ended up happening was now we have a track record. Um, and we now have access to um, more secondary markets because they betted us, they seen our, our performance of our loans. They, 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 they know our process. Um, and we can get on board. We already got on board with some and we have more that we're talking to. And now we're at the point where we have capital providers that will back us. If you may, that's what happens when you have a track record. Um, um, I do have family capital invested still that we could be very creative um, with these loans because we were investing a lot of B pieces. Um, so I realized what I realized that we could either um, co lend with an institutional partner, or we could just fund the loan and sell the loan off to a secondary market. Now we have um, capital buyers that would just fund the loan for us. Um, and that we have capital to cover um, interest payments, let's say, you know, it's to, to keep ourselves more competitive. So we're just paying ourselves. So we could, we could fund the loan with institutional capital, and then we could just offer another loan, like a micro loan to cover interest payments for like six or nine months, or we could, you know, but we're, we're going to always keep our leverage around the max 75%. Um, and it's a uh, it's a great it's a great business, and um, eventually we're gonna, you know, we're gonna probably invite investors to invest with us more into these loans where we can either fund the loan, sell the loan off, which is actually the most profitable in this business if you fund the loan and sell the loan off because you get to keep everything. 
when another capital provider funds the loan through a correspondent relationship, it's not as profitable. Um, and so that's why the opportunity is that we're going to be able to, where Lubin Capital will invite investors to invest with RCAD or RCAD is going to be raising money. We're going to be raising money or, or Levine Capital may invest with other lenders as well. Um, you know, and there's a lot of money coming into this market. There's a lot of money coming into this market. Um, a tremendous amount. Um, so it's a really great business. So that's probably my, um, that's where I see the, you know, it's, it, it's, if you, you know, it's a good, it's a good business to be in. Well, definitely. And it's a good time to, to be in that type of business. So like overall, because I mean, we, we just kind of talking about everything kind of, you know, but there is, I'm, I'm sure there are some people who keep in the track of uh, everything that you just, just talked about. Kind of, I just want to touch a few points here, like uh, Levine Capital, like management, like what, what are you like looking for, uh, like accomplish for that particular business this year? Like you, you mentioned, you, you're still doing deals, opening the fund with the TS, TSS and Eco Homes. Like, so what's going to happen for, for the fund this year? Um, so aggregation fund is, we're still active, um, you know, for, for, the, for a little bit, I was kind of not really focused on it as much because I was really focused with TCS. I wanted to close out these two funds. So aggregate, aggregation fund is, is open. Actually, I renegotiated the deal with them to get a better deal because my family, we invested more. I have some more investors that invested with us. So I re renegotiated the deal. Um, so that's open. 50,000 minimum, you know, you can always reach out. I could tell you more about that. TCS, um, that is something that I'm, I'm putting together. Um, it's probably around, like I said, 12 months, maybe, maybe sooner it may be available, but that's, um, a new structure we're putting together. Um, so investors can still, they could, res I mean, by all means, if you want to reserve, you know, you can log into our investor portal and, and reserve your, make a reservation. Um, but it's not open yet. Um, you know, but I, I, the goal is to, you know, have at least $5 million. Um, right now we probably invested about a million ish in the first two funds. Um, and then the next one, it's going to be a, a minimum of 5 million. Um, and is it going to be, and, the, and you can invest. Sorry, is it going to Go be on. the same? Is, is it going to be the single or family still, or is it going to be multi? Can you talk about, because you talked about maybe looking for multifamily use also. Yeah. So the aggregation is majority multifamily, but opportunistic. TCS will be single family, 20, but it'll be 20 units or less. Um, but the, the the strategy will be um it's it, the only difference is is that the next fund that we invest in is not going to be philadelphia it'll be in another state maybe detroit so, um and, and the, people, and and the, the minimum is going to be so sorry again and the people who want to invest with you alongside in the fund they're going to be structured as limited partners right there'll be a so the first two funds were just really people that were that, you know, the first one that were like me and two other friends of mine that I already had a relationship with. So we, we kept it very simple. I didn't have to go through a whole structure. I kept it very simple, but it really depends. I may go, I may bring in partners who are limited partners. Um, uh, I may go a different structure, let's say, because I may go, more towards investors who are outside of my inner circle. That makes sense. Like friends and family, you know, but were, the first two funds were small funds. I mean, they weren't big funds at all. They were like myself and two other people. The first one, second one had maybe a few more. It wasn't really, a, these weren't big funds, but now that I'm going to be doing larger raises, I'm, I, I may go through maybe the 506 C route, reg D route, or I may go 506 B. And how are they, um, they going to be typically structured? You know, like, well, what is the exit strategy you're looking to, to put in for, for these type of funds? Um, so 
the, these are um, they're five they're five we model out a five year hold. So the goal is to buy, renovate, and then refinance. It's like it's a burr method, mm -hmm. yep. just a massive burr method of, you know, the the first one was fifteen properties. The second one is, well, fund two I was in and fund three, um, because the the sponsor had their first fund, which is fund one, which is all equity, but fund two and three were, um, uh, they were, they they had debt attached to it and. So I'm invested in fund two and fund three and the, the, the next funds will, they'll have the same strategy to just be larger funds. Um, but really what they're doing is they're modeling out at a five-year hold value add. So they're going to buy, renovate, refinance. Um, we'll be able to repatriate our monies, let's say in 12 months, plus or minus, you know, um, We'll have retained equity, you know, so maybe we modeled out to be able to, in fund three, be able to repatriate most of our equity. Um, and then we'll have retained equity and then for a five year hold, and then in year five, they'll buy us out. Mm -hmm. uh, so does that make sense? Yeah, yeah of, course, of course. So the, the, my question that follows, uh, and I'm happy that you said that, that they're gonna buy you out. So at some point when, when's they gonna start accepting just an institutional type of capital uh, for the deals to invest in uh, for their funds? Um, so what are you planning to do when that's is gonna happen? Like well, what's gonna happen with your personal living capital fund? Like what type of deals are you gonna be investing when that's gonna happen? Where they, they will kind of buy you out? Um. Okay, so... Okay, maybe I, I, but let me clarify. So these are, so really these are value add deals. When they refinance out, when we refinance, they're gonna have a stabilized fund. So they're gonna buy us out and they, they wanna hold on to these assets. I could stay in the deal and to their stabilized fund if I want, or I could invest more to their stabilized funds. But that would be five years down the road when, um, because these are still new. I mean, we're talking about they had fund one, two, and three. I'm investing in two and three. Um, five years down the road, they're gonna the exit is to buy us out, or they can sell it off. But most likely, they'll buy us out, and then they're gonna have more funds because now they're the after they fill up fund number three with the fifty something but that's, properties. Sorry again, but, but, but that's not going to be available to the public because they're going to work with institutional capital then, right? Well, so. So what I could do is I could make it available. Okay, so let's say um, investors want to invest through Levine Capital. They can invest as little as, right now it's 50,000. If you want to make a reservation, you could reserve 50,000 now, but it may not, I don't know, I, uh, six months down the road, I may raise it or sooner, I may raise it to 100,000. Right, but if you want to make your reservation now, that's fine. I'll keep the fifty thousand, but I'm gonna, but I I'm, I may raise it. Um, the minimum invested to invest will be five million dollars, but to Levine Capital, it will be a lower denomination. So that's how you get in through Levine Capital. Um, the, that's really what it is. Will we be in the Philadelphia market? I don't know. Um, right now, I'm right now. It, it may not. We may not have that because they don't want to. They don't, they, they have their one investor that's a larger investor in the Philly market and they don't want us competing against that investor that makes sense. So they'll open it up to another market and most likely they'll have other institutional investors or that institutional investor may just go up from, they has a lot of money they can invest. So they'll go into other markets and then they'll give me something, they'll give me, you know, an opportunity as well, but it will be five million dollars minimum. Got it. Okay. okay, so that's which is fine. I mean, it's fine. Um, you know, you just have to aggregate five million dollars. You know, it's perfectly fine. We do that. Okay. So that's Levine Capital. So talking coming back to the Arcade Capital, like what's going to happen with that business? I mean, you're still going to, you know, get like provide the financing for. Fix and flips, and now you're looking to branch out different things, and like, like where you are with that business, like what's going to happen with it? I mean, this year, because you said you want to kind of 
get your hands deep in, in, into it because it's the right time. So what, what do you think uh, you're going you're gonna to do yeah. with it this year? Well, no, right now, I mean, it's, you know, March we was a huge scare, you know. It, everything shut down. We, we took a pause on lending because, I mean, you had, I mean, I mean, can you lend? Sure. But I mean, it was really, no one knew what the values were on these assets. Mm -hmm. The securitization shut down. So there was no liquidity. If you lent on these pro assets, you know, you may have to, there's a lot of problems in the market. Um, a lot of this, there's dislocations in the market, but um, right now it's, very, very bullish. Um, there's a lot of capital out there. And my goal was to grow this business. Um, I have two other partners, which um, they're great partners. And the goal is to really grow it um, and and start, you know, Levine Capital will continue to invest with Arcad. And then we'll have other investors that can invest either to Levine Capital or directly with Arcad, either or, doesn't matter. You know, but we're going to start inviting investors to invest with us because we're seeing an influx of, um, you know, demand of borrowers and we have liquidity. And really, um, it, you know, we're, our capital is limited for be able, so we can fund the loan and sell the loan off. It's limited to what we could do. So that's why we, we're going to eventually, well, we'll start raising money. You know, or we could hold the loans on our books either or, you know, we could, we could service the loans and everything and, and do all that. So, um, but there's, there's a huge demand for it right now um, and it's growing. Exactly. And it's not because I'm here saying that if you just Google what's going on, there's a lot of money coming into the market. A lot oh, yeah. of money. That, that, um, and and rates, are yeah, rates are coming down. The leverage has gone up. So it's kind of like a V-shaped recovery for private lenders where like, in March, everything shut down and it opened back up and the credit boxes are really tight and then now it's widening again. Mm -hmm. That's uh, where The market's too. comfortable. That's where I heard too. I yeah. Mean, people are talking about, you know, like the money's flooding the markets and I do understand when, you, when you're talking about, you know, uh, institutional type of capital is flooding, you know, private money because everybody's kind of looking probably to get rid of or at least to invest somebody into some deals that will provide, you know, passive income, some return on that investment. So that will be, you know, leveraged against the dollar, which like, you know, goes in value overnight, like, like every single day. But uh, so I love the fact. So I think for the people who are going to be watching, uh, some of the poor, like, I don't know who's watching and, you know, what type of investments are you looking for? Is it going to be to, you know, Arcad Capital or through Levine Capital, like, you know, whatever businesses they, they, they kind of look into words to do. But uh, I love the fact, like, uh, with the TSS and Ica Homes that you provide, the, 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 the leverage is kind of the mastermind group. And you teach the people like, so I don't know what, what, what is that? Because I would like to touch the point because I know that you have a book also on the website that we didn't mention that. Like, but what type of education platform like people are going to be expecting when they give you? Yeah, I got, I got kicked off, by the way. My apologies. <laughs> Can you uh, repeat? <laughs> that's no problem. Right. Look, uh, so what I, what I mentioned is like, I love the fact that when people can invest with you through TCS uh, Anika Homes, that there is a mastermind group that provides the educational platform. So can you talk about that? What people should expect with that? I mean, what type of education do they get in when they invest in alongside with you? So the, the education is really interesting because um, typically to invest with this caliber or type of quality sponsor, they're not going to give you their resources, their employees their time to lend them to you to for an hour or so zoom meeting for education they give that to me um we so we closed on fun too we closed on fun three this is all brand new it's nothing like it had it's less than a year old but we had we've had um multiple uh meetings where one was with um uh, the project manager for construction management. So we were on there actually for over an hour, um, a whole presentation and then a Q and a, you know, at a very high level. I mean, and our investors were there, they were asking questions and the sponsor was, or the, the project manager was answering questions. 
um, you know, they learned a lot. And then this, then we had another one with due diligence on like acquisition, you know, from all like an acquisitions to what, what are the steps that they take before they buy a property and what are they doing? You know, so there's a lot of moving parts to it. So that was with Luis. Um, he's head of acquisitions and he was on there. Then we had another one with, um, uh, we had a Q and a recently with, for fund three, it was um, a Q and a with the sponsor to, you know, we had Luis who's head of acquisitions. We had, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Joseph Puji, who's the head property manager. Then we had Daniel Edgy, who is one of the managing partners. We're on there for an hour. Um, that was the day of the, the evening of the debate with Trump and Biden. So we had a hard stop right at um, whatever. I forgot what time it ended, uh, but whatever. I, I have, I'm drawing a blank of the time that it ended. It was an hour. I remember that because of the everybody wanted to watch the debate, but we had that time. And it was really good. So we had a whole update what's going on. And then we opened up for Q&A. And then we're going to continue with these, you know. Um, we're going to continue it. Um, the only difference is, is that they're not going to be able to invest with 25000 again. You know, um, it, it is what it is. I, I raised the minimum, you know. Um, and uh, so investors that missed out, they're going to have to invest more now. And, I, and then and guess what I may do? Um, they want to get in. 50,000 may not be, it may be go up to a hundred thousand. <laughs> it may go up from there. And eventually we may not even cater to, we may raise it even more because um, the, because a lot of uh, advisors, they value our knowledge and, and um, you know, our expertise and, and uh, you know, so it, it, it's, that's really where we may get to, where we're just going to deal with larger investors. Um, and then eventually maybe I'll be reduced again because of the, you know, when I start hiring people to cater, but who knows, you know, I mean, look, we're, we're, gro we're a growing business and things are changing, you know, crowdfunding. You know, I see crowdfunders are taking $500. I mean, I don't know why that's, that's a lot of work, but. <laughs> yeah, it's we, a lot of work. We, we talked about. Oh, of course, they, they, they were, they're structured just differently. We're talking about maybe thousands of different people in a different departments who are collecting all that five hundred dollar bill. You know, so, <laughs> it's too it's, much. It's, it's too, too much. much. Um, yes. but who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll be there. Maybe I will. I, I don't know. You know, but um, would you would you like to they, do that in the future? Like, given access to like everybody, you know, to to your funds in the future. Of course, not not getting down to five hundred dollars, but um, like yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to it as long as I have the infrastructure to do it, and technology will help, and I have help. I, I'm not going to say no, but right now I'm I'm instead of reducing my minimums, I'm raising them, because like I said, I'm not I'm not a volume play, I'm not a volume shop where I'm just opening up funds after fund after fund. We're not. I'm not doing that. Um, I'm just not, I'm not, uh, we're not really, I'm, I'm not structured that way right now. Um, uh, but I'm not, I'm not opposed to, opposed to having multiple sponsors and deals in the future. But right now we're, we're very slow with the sponsors we're working with. It's just because there's a whole due diligence process, you know, and it's, it's not like we're just, we're, we don't have like a, a section on our website to raise capital. You know, and you could come and well, that's not what we're doing. You know, I have our two sponsors and then we're now we're looking at uh, one another sponsor. And that's a lengthy process because we have overseas investors that let's say in Korea that um, they want to see a minimum 10 year track record. Um, they want to see a billion AUM it, and 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 um so we want to make sure, like, if we put something together, that it could cater towards um, the domestic and international. But granted, look, I could always structure. Uh, that's for like a fund, but we could also structure syndications as well, or we could be creative later on. Um, so the business model is a that's a beautiful thing about this business because there's multiple there's multiple ways to 
there's you're not limited to just one model you you like this concept started because of an idea of wanting to help my you know help other people because i saw the need of my father needed help and i see that other people need that help and then i realized now there's wealth advisors that the wealth advisors that need help and and then as things happen i just come up with a solution that's really what it is so just a, um, just a natural evolution of your business that's all it is. that's it you know um and, and the markets are changing you know technology changes you know eventually real estate might go from the blockchain and i don't know like something that we'll have to you know <laughs> you know so technology changes everything you know and the good thing is like we have fund administrators i have an investor portal you can log in you could you know right now you're dealing with me um or the sponsor that's the really cool thing that we're doing is because you know you're you're, you're signing a confidentiality here because of um some of the, the the deals that i put in place or i want to keep confidential or they, or they want to keep it confidential uh plus also like I'm working very hard to put this together. So I don't want to just, you know, I want to keep it confidential. Um, but it, it's, um, you know, you go log in and you could, you, you can um, invest and then you could see everything. And it's really, it's really nice. And then you could, if you want, you could ask the sponsor questions. So you're not just, I'm not just, you're not like investing and dealing with me. If you want, you could, Go to the sponsor's office. You can call them up on the phone. You have that open dialogue. Um, and that's something that uh, I, to me, I, I I think that's important that for investors. I have some investors, they don't care. They're like, I don't really care. I just want to, you know, they go up because they trust. But uh, but look, I don't, I, I don't believe that you should be like, look, some people, um, like my father, for example, he's he invested off a of trust, but now he's, you know, he he understands he knows the way I bet, and he you know we communicate a lot, but he goes off of my um, expertise and and you know we're not looking for more sponsors at this time, so he's investing with a few. Some people they like to constantly go on a crowdfunding platform and constantly see a new deal, and they get attracted to the to the returns and I, to me that's you're looking at the wrong thing i would look at who's the operator and that's what i would focus on first and once you find a few good operators you ready to do your due diligence then why should you go to more like i'm happy with the ones i'm working with mm. you know i, so can, I already can, have can, can you talk about that you know for the people again how do you like what is the process what is like a due diligence process behind you know screening uh, an operator to make sure that he's good so I have a I have an ebook that I could give to your audience that I created, um, not an ebook. It's a due diligence um, uh, little little book, but just due diligence. I can give that for free. Um, awesome. And really, that goes through a checklist of things. I mean, like for example, I like to see. Um, okay, so there's a few things, right? You can like what I realize is I'm not looking to. For myself, I'm not looking to invest with someone that's new. Um, my family or my father, he's done that before, and it ended up, you know, it, things didn't work out well. But it was a learning lesson. He's okay though. Um, but what I when when I'm helping him with the process, I I um. I developed the process. I didn't just come up with it on my own. I spoke to a lot of people like, like Dato Edry or others in the industry and and fought, and, and, and learned and created my own method of vetting. Um, I like to invest with institutional caliber sponsors, meaning that, you know, maybe the deal we're in, there may, there may not be institutional capital partners in it, um, but they have deals where there are, they do have, you know, institutional capital partners. Um, they have strong financials. Um, I know one of the spot. I know, I know that um, the track record has to be there. The financials have to be there. Um, you know, when, the thing is, it's very hard to get those things unless 
if you're someone new, like you're going to write a hundred thousand dollar check, they're not going to open up their book to you. I, maybe they will. Um, it's, it depends on the sponsor, but you could ask for more when you write a larger check. Um, so I, I'm looking at, I like to look at their financials. Um, I want to see their fight. I want to see what they have. You know, I want to see, um, talk to references. I want to like talk to references. I want to, um, see the type of deals they've done. I want, I don't want it to be their first rodeo. Like, you know, they're looking, they, they start out flipping houses down there a syndicator and they're doing like, you know, they're doing their first deal on their own. Meanwhile, they invested with other syndicators, but now this is their first deal because, you know, they signed up for a course and they learned how to syndicate and raise money. And now they're coming to me. That's not the person I want to, like, I want to work with someone that's has a certain AUM. Uh, they have the track record. They, you know, um, TCS, they got a line of credit, a $15 million line of credit from Corvette. Do I need to see their financials? I didn't really, I, I didn't ask for it. I mean, I, because I knew that That's in order, I saw, well, they had, the, I saw the term sheets from Corvest and I know the rigorous vetting process that Corvest put them through. Yeah. That makes sense. And I, and I knew the people I'm dealing with. So when I, I didn't have to look, let me see your book. So I, I look, I, I, I knew what I was dealing with. That makes sense. And plus, these are new funds we're dealing with. Um, um, but I, I, it wasn't like I, I had a, a different relationship, you know. Um, but that's it. I mean, I look for track record and the, the financial strength. Um, the one thing though you have to keep in mind is that generally, when you're investing a smaller amount of money, you're going to get less. You're not going to get more. We're investing more money, or we're committing more money, so we can get more. That makes sense. And we can ask for more and get more. You know, um, well, unless, unless you have a good relationship, just like you have uh, with the TSS and Eco Homes, and you can kind of, you know, like negotiate the, the the returns or something in that nature, because the relationships um, go go a long yeah. way still. Yeah, it's um, I mean, one hundred percent. It's like I had a, I actually have a mastermind with a few of my friends. We started, um, and Daniel Edrew came on there as one of the topics was uh, betting sponsors. And to have Daniel Edry speak, I said, hey, um, Daniel, do you mind, you know, taking time under evening to, you know, come on a Zoom meeting for, to, for a topic of betting sponsors? He's like, he basically, his response was, it would be my pleasure. You know, that's relationship. That's a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have to take his time out of his evening when he has a family, you know, a wife and, you know, he kids and family and, to do that, you know, but he did that because of the relationship and the knowledge he shared was unbelievable. It was a whole, we don't, they don't have a, I don't, I don't know if they have courses on betting spot. Maybe they do now, you know, they probably, you know, maybe call you to me or something, but his level of knowledge was very um, high level. Um, and, and that's, and that's how I learned a lot. You know, I have a master's in real estate. I have my father, but really, you know, it's the relationships of people you're dealing with. Like the stuff I learned about investing as an institutional investor, structure, you know, you know, coming, you know, they don't teach you that in grad school. None of that. This stuff I just learned by doing, learned by the relationships and, and just being, just being in it, you know? Um, but it, my goal was to really help other people because a lot of people don't, they don't know about this stuff. Yeah. Hey, my new partner, you know, he comes from a finance background, but he didn't, he wanted to literally get into flipping houses. He asked me about that. And I said, look, um, okay. You know, and I, I, I went into the pros and cons of what he was looking to do. Um, because at that time he was working full time. I was like, well, look, if you're, you have a full time job, I don't think you should flip a house. That's a lot of risk because, mm -hmm. How about you invest with me and we'll buy multiple properties with another sponsor. But I showed him, I opened up a whole new world that, that he would never learned on his own of how to invest as a, an institutional investor and how to structure the deal and more to it, you know, creating feeder funds or funds of funds. And, um, you know, and, and I, 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 he's a really nice kid. He became a good friend of mine. We talk every day. And, you know, right now we're, we're, 
you know, he's a career right now. And he's talking, he has relationships out there. But what's interesting is, is that the, the background that he has at Goldman and his background, you know, with his credentials, he has a skill set that you can't take away from a lot of syndicators. They may come from like an IT background. They may come from, mm-hmm. I don't know, like, but a lot of them didn't work for a prestigious investment bank. They're not CFAs. They're not CPAs. I mean, they may have experience, but, you know, or look, they, and this personality, this person, he, my partner today has a very good personality, amazing person. He's a very nice person, good heart. That to me, and, and I know he has integrity. These are good, these are things I look for also in a relationship. I don't, you could be the smartest person, but maybe you're not a good person. <laughs> so I want to work with you. I, I mean, so that, that's stuff you got to watch out for. So to me, integrity is a lot. Um, and I know that, with his skill set, I saw something in him. I was like, you know what? I I could work. I want to work with you. Let me bring you in as a partner and help me grow this thing. And it it's unbelievable the amount that he's learned and he contributes so much because, you know, we're running a lot of numbers and analyzing and, you know, we ran the numbers for even the feeder fund. I had him look over the financials with me. Because I, I, you know, I have help, but I'm like, hey, let's look over this because, you know, he has investors as well. And obviously, you know, I'm ha- I'm comfortable with them. But if he's going to have investors invest, obviously he needs to be comfortable as well. Yeah. And, yeah. and with TCS, he helped, he looked over the deals with me and he invested as well. And, 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 and now we're dealing with wealth advisors in Korea. And, um, it's uh, you know, it's a skill set that 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 you know, it's the knowledge and the skill set to be able to look at things and analyze and 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 it's 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 um, and he has that. That's you know, corporate, but now going into real estate debt or equity, it's you know, I have a lot of the knowledge, but he could, you know, he adds a lot of value that. You know, and that's how you, you grow in this business. You can't do it on your own. You have to have people around you that have different skill sets that you don't have. That makes sense. You know, yeah. he's very analytical, very good with numbers. Um, you know, hence the, the CFA and CPA working for a prestigious investment bank. You know, can't take that away from him. Um, and I know that we could grow this company a, a lot. A tremendous, we're going to grow it from starting out as a fund of funds to, a joint venture with where I'm calling a co-investor because the investors are investing with us or co-investing, you know, to, um, uh, eventually it could, we could, eventually we could go off on syndications or there's, there's no limit. I mean, there's so many things we could do. Um, but all it takes is the, the knowledge and relationships and access to, and then, and obviously investors that want to invest with us, mm-hmm. you know, or, or they want, you know, so that's really, there's a lot, you know, that we could, that, uh, real estate's amazing. There's so much you could do. Definitely. And when you have the right partner on board, that it just makes things more smoother and easier. And again, uh, congratulations on that because you don't come across people like, uh, like your partner, you know, that often. And, you know, God, you just, uh, Put that person in front of you and he was like hey take him you know which is which is that, awesome. that's really what it was yeah it was god that really did that you know i i put it all i mean I, I for me i'm i put all everything towards god that's really everything and 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 i i was looking for help and kind of like he came into my life and even my wife was like i'm like that's a blessing because there and and not only that, like there's a lot of people out there that you know they're just not good people. <laughs> it, it's they're just they're yeah, just I not mean, good I, people. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, I have there is a different there's a different kind of podcast episode that we can talk about that because I, I come across uh, you know multiple people as you know yourself but like doing all these episodes and you know there's like syndication in particular because you're probably talking about these and probably different you know sponsors they can. Uh, you know, start the relationship with. And some of those, uh, I came, you know, myself, uh, like, I didn't know the person, you know, and like, I had the person on the show and somebody came up to me, he was like, man, that's not a good person to, to have on a show. I was like, what's the story? 
And he was like, man, he scammed a lot of people. And I was like, whoa. So we took the episode down and that we'd like, because I don't want to have relationships with these type of people either, you know, but you just never know. And again, you know, the, the fact yeah. that you came across that person and is like, he has the skill set, he has the, the background, the network, everything that you need, you know, for the perfect kind of sponsor, uh, for the perfect kind of, you know, partner. It, it's again, it's a blessing as what I said. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah, exactly. Um, and th th this is a business where it's lifelong. Um, to me, like, this is not a, you're not going to get rich quick. There's no, but it's really, it's wealth building in real estate, you know? Um, and it's, it's really for the, for, for the long haul. That's the goal of this business. Um, you know, it, it, and right now, like what's really interesting was during this whole, uh, shutdown, this global shutdown, I really, took the time to think about what could we do. Um, and uh, so, I, so we, we sat down or we're continued our meetings and, and um, we kept, we kept it going. I'm like, this is an opportunity. I mean, right now it's actually a really, when the world's coming to an end, that's where there's opportunity. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And a lot of private equity firms were just raising a, a, an enormous amount of capital, you know, opportunity funds, they, they open up and, and that's what's happening, you know? And so I'm thinking to myself, well, last recession, I was in, I was a, an undergrad studying business um, at Wilkes University. I was studying business. I was on the wrestling team. I didn't know what was going on. I just heard like, Oh, the market crashed and people's houses are being foreclosed on. I see a bunch of, you know, signs on people's lawns going up and, and the world's coming to an end. And, um, but, but, but we were fine. My father was fine. <laughs> you know, he had his house paid off cash, you know, he, he had rentals. He's good, you know, but everybody else was, you know, um, his stock portfolio took a hit, but that wasn't his, you know, that wasn't his only monies. Um, but point was, is, um, uh, now is an opportunity because, the the opportunity a minute now and i have the knowledge i have the relationships and there's no reason why we shouldn't be successful at what we're doing um and that's it you know there's a lot of opportunities out there that i'm studying i'm studying i'm studying and and we're vetting more and more sponsors i have a call with a sponsor tomorrow that we're, we're we've been vetting for a few months now you know, talking to references, um, they have multiple funds, um, and that's it, you know, and, and, and just keep on setting up calls and building relationships because at the end of the day, maybe this one sponsor, we may not be interested in their strategy now, or maybe they don't have the track record today, but that doesn't mean they're not going to get there tomorrow or like years on, maybe they're on five years, but 10 years down the road in total, that, that may be someone. You know, we will so go just with keep keeping the relationship going. You know, the relationship, you know, just, that's it. Yeah. It's the relationships, and 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 I'm I'm all for the relationships. I'm, you know, um, but it, it's and and uh, you know, it's interesting to study the models, and you get to see different models, and and you know, we have it down to a science now of our vetting. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's um, typically we want to see financials. Not every sponsor is going to give it to you. We could get it because of, you know, the, the amount of monies that we're going to commit. Um, track record, you, we see everything. You know, we'll, typically a lot of sponsors, if they're reputable, they'll give it to you. <laughs> you know, um, and and typically we, we negotiate. The, the ones they what then we, it's kind of like a beauty a beauty pageant as well. We want them to tell us like. Why should we invest with them? Let them tell us why that makes sense. And then we'll, you know, that's where we're, we're at that stage right now. Um, and then we're taking debt because we have the value add. We have the opportunistic. Um, and I'm thinking debt because I, I don't have that right now for investors. I, my family invested debt, but I haven't opened it up to um anybody else actually no 
I have one other investor with my father that's invested in Arkham Capital. That's for now, yeah. at least for she's now. A good, she's like family. She's like a good friend. So she invests with us. But, um, but, but, but soon, soon, soon it's going to be opening a little bit more to the public also. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the only difference is the tax, you don't have the same tax advantages. So there's just yeah. pros and cons. Like with the private equity, um, it, you know, you have more ta tax advantages. Um, with that, you don't have it. So mm -hmm. it's pluses or minuses. Yeah, again, it, again, as I said, you know, because there's different groups of people who are watching the episode and somebody is looking to invest in a different, you know, different things, asset classes or just uh, different, you know, instruments, uh, financial instruments. So, you know, make sure to get in contact with Adam about these uh, opportunities. And one thing that I wanted to mention, uh, I'm looking at it, it's on their website. It's called Passive Income Real Estate Investing. It's a free step-by-step -step blueprint for passive investing. So again, uh, kind of talking about this, you know, educational piece with the, that, you know, T TS, uh, T TSS Anika Homes provides yeah. when you invest with them. And this one yeah, that's actually, the due diligence. Yeah, yeah that's the due diligence, um, the, the, the blueprint um, that we're giving away for free. Eventually I'll have an ebook, um, but you know, this is all stuff that we put together mm -hmm. and we use it. And, I, and obviously like it, there's more, it's a good start, but like, if you have questions, you know, we're always open to helping people out. The whole idea is just to, we just want to help people. Um, and I, I see a need, I see a need of, um, you know, like just going to like different RIAs or different meetups. I, I'm always like have my my scam alert thing going off in my head because everybody is looking for something. Um, and, um, you know, you just have to be careful out there. That's all I can really say. Uh, there's a lot of sponsors out there. You know, you could Google real estate investment and boom, you're just searching your phone or computer and you have all these pop-ups everybody's looking for something yeah. i'm not saying these are bad sponsors they actually can be amazing sponsors but what i'm saying is how do you know who to invest with how do you know which is good which is bad it it's hard to know you know that, that, that is the main question because there is a lot of, again we if, if we're going to talk about single family you know uh, portfolio funds or if it's going to be multifamily funds I mean, if you're going to look at these different asset classes, some of those, of course, if we're going to look, you know, multifamily versus uh, single family, there could be different returns, you know, on cash or, you know, like uh, equity multiples or, you know, whole periods and all those uh, type of things. But like, so it's kind of similar. It could be similar, let's say multifamily, like everybody provides similar returns. If it's 8%, you know, if you like 12% IRR or something in that, in that, right. But like, how do you vet the vet the operator? That's kind of the main thing. And I love the fact that you have the book for people to kind of go through the steps because, you know, everybody is kind of giving these terms. But as you say, like, how do you know who is the who's the right, uh, you know, partner for you to partner with and, you know, give give the money that you work hard for. So that, that's something. 100%. And, and, and one other thing too is like, people don't realize is like, what I learned is like a sp the sponsor is everything that you should be looking at. Don't get excited about the numbers. Like what I learned is I want to look at the sponsor first and I want to bet them first. Then I'll look at the deal. That makes sense because going the other way around, it's a waste of time, a complete waste of time. And then the, these numbers are just projections. I mean, it's whatever, you know, I mean, yeah, performer. You, could, you could pull different financial triggers to, to, to make the IRR go up by increasing leverage, repatriating money faster, and, you know, different things could change things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, and the, there's a saying, you know, a good sponsor could save a bad deal and a bad sponsor could ruin a great deal. So, and, and another thing too is like, you know, syndication, everybody's talking about syndication, 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 which are they're nice. I mean, I had some deals come my way um, but what's interesting with funds is a whole other thing I talk about is you could, you're diversified in the multiple assets. So like, instead of being heavily, um, heavily, uh, and focused on one 
particular deal, or it could be an apartment building, you could have multiple apartment buildings where if one's not as performing as well, the other ones will offset yep. the bad performers. So you're di diversifying your concentration risk. Granted, they could be semi semi blind pool funds, meaning that the sponsor you're investing with with TCS, it was a it was a semi blind pool fund because, well, fund number two was, it was um, it was a fund, but we already the, the sponsor already identified the assets, the fifteen properties. Fund three was a semi blind, meaning that. We had the acquisition criteria. We knew what we were getting, but we relied on the sponsor to find, to, to do everything, you know, leverage their relationships, their, their track record experience with the, to get the financing, to get the best terms, you know, their everything, you know, but. And then you have blind pools, which is uh, my aggregation fund. But that aggregation fund is more of a blind pool, but they're a top sponsor. Um, you know they, you know they tell you everything they're doing, but it's um, but uh, it's you know it, they could they could they have different strategies. You know that they can go into opportunistic, or they can even go into the structured credit if they want to, which it may be available. So. It really depends. Um, or syndication. I mean, the benefit of a syndication is you know what you're getting into, but um, that's it, you know. And and there could be, you know, there could be, um, uh, you know, there could be. Um, how do I explain? Uh, uh, you know, you're, you're, I had it happen to me where a deal came to me. It looked like a decent deal. The sponsor was a good sponsor. They're a family office. They're looking for investor to come in. I would be investing as a, I want to, I would structure it more as a joint venture, but the timing was too soon. They needed to close like in November and that's not enough time for me to make a decision or to get our investors on board with us because we would have to have our investors agree to it. That makes sense. You know, it's not something quick, but that, that was like a like 500 and something units. It was like, there's multiple, it was a syndication, but uh, as a fund, because they had multiple part buildings that they were going to pull together. So it was a syndication, but multiple yeah. property, which to me, that's actually, you're spreading out the risk. Um, they had a higher leverage too, which I was looking for a little bit lower leverage for that strategy. It was a value add, but I was looking for uh, lower leverage. Uh, they were going above 70 percent leverage on their value add which i was looking for lower no no they were going above so i was looking about 70 percent max um that was it so i i looked at I, the sponsor was strong they were a strong sponsor so i kept the relationship i, I want to keep the relationship open because um you know maybe another something else will come our way you know we'll be interested and we could we need more time though it was just way too soon this is you know but it looked like an interesting opportunity, though. It was in um, Texas. It looked good. It looked interesting. I mean, and I, mean, I know the queen of it. You, you guys, you guys are so lucky, and again, that that's why you have the attention of the, you know, like uh, Korean market again, the, the, where your partner is at, you know, and like there is so much, uh, you know, foreign capital coming into the states because you have uh, so many available states uh, that you know are doing super well, like you mentioned, the Texas, Georgia. You know the Carolinas and you know Florida and again I'm not sure because you know like I'm not from there and I'm sure you know the TSS do their own kind of due diligence on the market and by investing in Philadelphia and Detroit you know they they, they buy properties in there we have so many different states offering these great uh, you know investments even though like you can find a great investment within the state it could be you know two blocks away and it's going to be a completely different return and completely different kind of area so. So, I mean, there's so many different opportunities if we like, especially during these times where people are looking there, a lot of people and companies are liquid and they're looking to put, to pour that cash into, you know, something that will pay them something, you know? Exactly. And, and that's what I'm doing. Like, I'm, you know, it, what's really interesting is like, I couldn't do this on my own. Like I, I have another, my mastermind group, they want to be, um, 
some of my partners that I, I said, let me help you try to be a co-sponsor. Um, it's a lot of work. I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's a lot of work to find that the deal to negotiate it, put up deposit dollars. You're spending money because it ain't free to, to do your due diligence. And meanwhile, when you're working with a good sponsor, they're going to get the deals, the best deals. Yeah. It's relationships. They have the track record of relationships. Yeah, exactly. And then they're going to get the best financing that you or I can't get. Yeah. Um, and that's just the nature of it. So for me, I, I value the relationships with, with, with this working with a sponsor, you know, they're, do they have, and I had people, Oh, they have a lot of fees. I mean, they got to keep the lights on and you know, the amount of work that it takes to do what they're doing, you know, it, so people, some people are like, Oh, I'd rather do it myself. Good. How many houses are you going to buy? You're going to buy one house or, few or you, or you look to buy a hundred of them or yeah you know he's gonna or, he, he or she's gonna manage himself like tenants the toilets termites all these you know things are coming up you get phone calls at night and you know it's so there is advantages disadvantages you know investing passively and having active deals you know and being kind of your own landlord you know and doing the small deals but i mean it, it, it's coming back to the point like how big do you want to go in and like what is your investing strategy do you want to be active or do you want to be passive so that, that's, that's like, yeah. like my father, like he wants to be passive because he's retired um, from his, his profession, which was dentistry. He was active through most of his investment career. Um, but he's just tired of being a landlord. He's tired of, you know, even though he has property managers, he, he still have to deal with, tenants because the private venture is going to call you up or send you an email about a situation that you need to probably write a check because there's damage or whatever it is. There's always something. And he doesn't want to deal with it no more. He doesn't want to deal with it as a passive investor the sponsor does everything. All he cares about is how much money do you want what is it doing? And what am I getting back? That's it. You know, he doesn't care about, oh, well, there has to be an eviction and now I got to deal with this. And, oh, there's some type of sewer pipe, some type of pipe that broke and I got to deal with this and I got to write a check or I got to call up this insurance company to, to deal with this. And I got to, like, there's always like, you you know, you're working, you know, he, so now he wants to sell off a lot of his assets. He, I know he's trying to sell his office building and he wants to sell houses that he owns and, you know, and, and different things that he manages and he wants to just be passive. Um, mm. um, granted, he has a better setup than most people because he has me to help him, which really, you know, but not everybody, I'm not saying that I'm the only person to go to. There's other people out there you can rely on, you know. But if you don't, if you're not that smart, find someone that's smart with integrity, someone that you that look, there's a lot of smart people, but obviously you gotta be able to trust them. Um, but but so but someone that understands the business if you don't understand it and make sure that you're you know you may have to invest, you may let's say you, you're dealing with an advisor that goes out and vets sponsors do another vet that, that person mm -hmm. make sure they have the the skill set and they know what they're yeah. doing well i'm sure there is people who are investing passively that's one of the reasons the kind of the main reasons why they invest passively because they don't they, they don't have a, the clue what's happening with the real estate business and with the funds and they don't want to they do they don't want to know maybe they want to get involved in the education part like with the tss when they provide these kind of uh, you know, Zoom type of calls when they kind of educate, get, but you know, that's, that's kind of happens after a little bit. And I'm sure not everybody who invests passively joins on, on these Zoom meetings because not everybody wants to know. As no, like said, I, I, some I have investors. Just, like, just take it and keep it. Then. Like, I don't care. I have investors that don't care. Yeah. I mean, they're my larger investors. Because they don't have the time. And they don't ask any questions. My little $25,000 investor is the one that I'm on the phone for two hours answering questions. I don't mind it, but it's just funny. And what's funny is Daniel warned me. He's like, Adam, originally I was like, I was going to do 10,000. I was like, Adam, and even my father's like, Adam, you're crazy. You don't want to do that. Now I know why. 
<laughs> because you're you're working for them. It it sounds weird, but it it's true. Um, and look, I don't mind helping people. Like right now, I'm doing it because I, I really want to help people. And the education, there's investors in our group that they care. But it's really funny is that the larger investors, they don't even want to, I invite them to the meetings, they never show up. They don't yeah, care. Because that's their strategy. It's coming back to the strategy. They don't want to just be, they want to be diversified and probably it's not the only one investment that they do by investing in, in your RTSS, you know, funds. They probably are still in a, maybe heavily in a stock market into different, you know, uh, financial vehicles and so whatever that might be, because that's what the wealthy people do. They diversify, you know, in, in different, different, uh, you know, asset classes. And, and what's really nice is like, they'll call me up. I have a few of them. They'll call me up and they'll pick my brain on some other deals they're invested in with other sponsors or whatever. And I'll look at it for them. And, you know, I, look, it's a relationship. I, I, and, 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 you know, that's why I'm in this business because it's really a business of adding value. Um, and, you know, I, look, I enjoy it. Um, and right now, like the way, I, the, what I want to tell people is like, exploit me while you have me, because eventually I'm going to have kids with my wife. And right now I don't, right now I'm making time, but eventually the time with education is going to last forever. It's it just I it just physically it's it's a lot of work. Um, and I don't mind doing it right now. Eventually, I wouldn't mind becoming a professor as well, like a an adjunct professor, um, where I could give back to the students and you know, um. But so for me, this is a way to teach people of what we're doing, and we look at numbers and. But I just when I have kids, I'm gonna have less time. If that makes sense. When I grow this thing, I'm probably going to hire people so I can do less and outsource. And then you're not going to have me as much. If that makes sense. You'll be dealing with someone yeah, that works yeah. with me. Definitely. That makes so, oh, of yeah. course. Of course. So make sure, make sure to get in contact with Adam while you can. And of course, those, <laughs> those links are going to be down below. And, and for another reason, because you might heard blink blink, you know, there's uh, his father is looking to sell off some properties and some offices. So make sure to contact with these type of deals. Cause I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, uh, syndicators or operators or, you know, small investors who are looking maybe to purchase these type of properties. Of course, I'm, I'm just kidding, you know, but uh, it, it's been a great fun. And uh, of course, like you, like you, like the wealth of knowledge that comes from you, I mean, it's immense. And I know that you can go for another two, three hours because again, that's that's what you do. That's your passion. You're looking to educate people at the same time, you know, like help them to invest in a deal, to, you know, passively and that way earn some income, which is a great way to be, you know, invested in, in, in real estate. Like it's a great vehicle that worked for a hundred years before, uh, you know, so, so it's really cool. So, you know, like, and that's what I want to do for you guys for watching, make sure to grab the book again, educate, get, get start to get your education about, you know, how to vet the sponsors. What, it, what does it take? Is Adam is the right person to invest with you with make sure to grab a book and, and, and you're going to find out, but, uh, Adam, I appreciate your time. It's, it's been yeah. a pleasure talking with you today. Absolutely. Look, you know, um, you could find me on the website, Levine Capital, LinkedIn, Instagram. You find me on Instagram. Um, what else? Sources, Bigger Pockets, uh, TikTok. I'm not really. <laughs> What's interesting about TikTok is um, this famous DJ is like, um, they're renting my father's house. And uh, so, like, a, a very large house that he he was going to sell, but he's renting to them because, you know, it's a nice rent he's getting, you know? Um, but the, but he, his business took off on TikTok. And then I'm talking to other people. They're like, ah, you gotta get on TikTok. I'm like, um, I don't know, but I'll look into it more. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that the whole, the, whatever, the, all, the, all the political stuff. I, that's why I kind of didn't get involved in it, to be honest with you. Right, I, yeah, yeah. I want to keep my privacy, but maybe yeah. it's worth giving up privacy for what for you can get. I don't know. For some TikTok <laughs> videos, uh, that's going to be entertaining. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So, so soon, soon we're going to see Adam on a TikTok. So make sure you, you follow him on Instagram and LinkedIn and keep yourself updated before that's going to happen. Yeah. If you ever need anything, you know, 
you could shoot me a uh was it the dm a dm on instagram um facebook message um yeah linkedin yeah. bigger pockets i'm accessible oh you yeah know? oh yeah and, and that's what that's how we connected because you know i i definitely can can you know tell like how easy adam is is in reach right now well at this moment while he's still available <laughs> because as he as he said he's not gonna be like that forever so make sure to do that to contact him and ask <laughs> these questions uh, if it's, you know, investing, you know, through him, through the, you know, Levine Capital into some, you know, single family like funds, or if, if it's through, you know, Arcad Capital and what's he's doing with the financing and just make sure to get in contact because at the end of the day, look, it's, it's almost been like two hour interview, but tremendous amount of value, like a lot of great information for you to take away. But the key thing is for you to get in contact with the people that you're seeing on this interview. So, you know, I want you to get in contact with Adam. And of course, all these links are going to be down below for you to do so. Yeah. And then um, let me know for um, your, I guess, uh, another topic when we talk about this is kind of like a broad overview, but, yeah. you know, I could, I'm sure next time I, I jump on here, I'll have. We're going to narrow something. down. Yeah. I'll narrow down something that I'm really doing, you know, because I have a lot going on. Oh, yeah. A lot to talk about, but hey, I love it. This is like a passion. And when you love what you're doing, it's not work. Exactly, exactly. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, okay, guys. So one thing that I wanted to ask you before we're going to go, if you share this episode with a friend of yours, uh, the person who kind of always talks real estate investing, but never pulls the trigger, never, you know, like lacks the sources, the information, this is definitely going to be a great episode for that person. So make sure to share that with, the, with that person. And uh, Adam, again, I really appreciate your time. It's been a tremendous, uh, you know, amount of knowledge, information, and good time speaking with you today. So I really appreciate it. And guys and girls, as always, I will see you in the next